Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to another video. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of the Seamstress. I hope you're all okay. So for this week's video I was going to be recording a sew along but this week um, I just haven't really had enough time to kind of set a whole day aside to sew. So, so, so. <laughs> so instead I thought I'd just do a little um, kind of catch up video. I've got some new fabrics to share and um, just show you things that I'm working on and things like that. So I hope that'll be okay instead. And then hopefully I'll be able to do another sew along shortly. So just in case you are new to my channel, my channel is all about sewing and crafting, sometimes with some knitting and other things thrown in, but mainly all about sewing. I'd love you to consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And um, please don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you do enjoy this video, I'd love you to give it a big like at the end. That would be really helpful to me too. So I seem to have acquired quite a few different fabrics over the last few weeks and um, I thought I'd share them with you today and just kind of talk through a few vague plans I have for them. So I wasn't going to be buying any new fabrics. I was going to really be kind of good and try and use up what I had. Um, but things have just kind of cropped up. I've been sent some more Minerva fabrics for my um, Minerva kind of brand ambassador role um, as well. So I'll share those today as well. Oh, but just before I get started, I'll just tell you what I'm wearing today. So today I'm wearing a Tilly and the Buttons Indigo Top kind of hack. You may remember this um, fabric. It, this was an indigo dress and I'll just pop in a picture of the dress um, when I originally made it a good couple of years ago now. Um, but I made this dress and I really loved it at the time, uh, but then I just never wore it and I think it was because um, something about the length of it and the frill that I'd added and everything just wasn't quite right and I didn't feel comfortable wearing it. So I decided to kind of hack the bottom off and make it into a short kind of peplum style top. So I'll just stand up and show you what it looks like now. It's actually quite short. I did cut it quite short in the end, um, but it's fine with kind of high waisted jeans and shorts and things. Um, and I really like it as a top and I think I'll get much more wear out of it this way. But it's always a good thing to do, I think, to just go through things and um, think about why you might not be wearing them and think about maybe how you can change them. And I'm really pleased because it did take me quite a while to decide to actually chop off the bottom of that dress because it seemed like such a shame. But if I get more wear out of it this way, then I think that's always a good thing. So on to my first lot of fabric. So you may already know how much I love Atelier Brunette fabrics. <laughs> uh, recently um, they came out with a couple of sweatshirt designs and I saw these come up on, um, I think it was Guthrie Gardy's website and I ended up buying them from them in the end. Um, but these are the sweatshirt designs that they brought out. So this is the navy colorway and it also comes on a cream background as well. And it's really, really lovely. And um, I just kind of fell in love with both of the colourways of this fabric. So yeah, I couldn't really resist these. So this is um, the navy colourway. And um, I actually even brought the Atelier Brunette ribbing to go with it. And I think I brought far too much of this actually, but hopefully I'll be able to use it for another project in the future. I think I got half a metre. Um, but because it's the actual Atelier Brunette ribbing, it does match perfectly with the sweatshirt fabric. If I just hold them up together, you can see how well they match. Um, so yeah, I brought the sweatshirt fabric, just a metre of that so that I could just make a little sweatshirt from it. So these fabrics are actually fleece back, so they're really soft inside, but they're actually quite thin. So I thought they'd be really good for kind of the spring and summer months, because obviously we always still need sweatshirts and jumpers here in the UK, don't we, in the summertime, because it's always quite chilly, especially in the evenings. So I thought um, another couple of sweatshirts would really be a handy thing for my wardrobe. And I always love to wear sweatshirts for sort of walking the dog or walking to school or just sitting in the garden in the evenings when it's chilly and things like that. So I think they'll definitely come in handy. And I also bought the cream colourway of exactly the same design. So it's the same fabric base. It's just that really soft sweatshirt in fabric with a fleece back in, really quite nice and thin. So it'll be nice for the summer months. Um, so when I bought this, uh, Guthrie Garney didn't actually have the ribbon to match this fabric in stock. So I went onto the Minerva website and I brought one of their ribbons, but I think if I hold them up together, you'll be able to see that they don't quite match. <laughs> it's so hard trying to find ribbons online to match with sweatshirt in fabrics. I just I hate buying it online. Um, but I think Minerva are actually stocking these Atelier Brunette sweatshirt ins now. So I think I'm going to go back on the Minerva website and um, order some of the correct Atelier Brunette ribbing so that I know they will match perfectly to this because otherwise I'm going to be ordering about a million different kind of off-white ribbings just to try and get the right colour. 
So even though it is a little bit more pricey paying the Atelier Brunette prices, I think it'll be worth it. And it'll make a really lovely kind of special summer sweatshirt. So those are my first two fabrics. And as I say, I bought these from Guthrie and Garney, um, but I am gonna try and get the ribbing from Minerva just because I'm one of their craft club members. So I do get the 10% discount. So that works out a little bit cheaper. So next I have two jersey fabrics, which I got from Minerva. And these are my brand ambassador fabrics for the month. So they were gifted to me from Minerva in exchange for a review on my uh, Minerva profile. So these are both art gallery jerseys and they're both cotton jerseys. So they're quite kind of stretchy, You've got a good amount of stretch to them. And they're both in quite a light colorway. So the first one is a kind of gray and white geometric kind of print, a kind of diamond print. If I hold it up to the camera there, you can just see the subtle kind of print on it. And um, there's actually loads of these. I asked for a meter and a half, but they're really wide. If I hold it out, you can see how much there is. So I'm gonna have absolutely loads. And I just wanted to make a t-shirt with this actually, because I did a huge wardrobe clear out recently. And um, what the main gaps were in my wardrobe were just kind of basic t-shirts and things like that. I threw out a load of white t-shirts that had just gone kind of bobbly and grey and just weren't really right anymore and I thought that I would make some new t-shirts for myself so that was my idea with these two fabrics. But yeah I do have absolutely loads of this um, and the other cotton jersey I got from Minerva was this one so it's another kind of white background and then it has this really lovely black speckly print all over it. So again, I just asked for a meter and a half. And again, there's absolutely loads of it. So I think I'm gonna make a t-shirt with this, um, or both of the fabrics actually. And two t-shirts I have my eye on are the Iris T by Forget Me Not Patterns. And I'll just pop a picture in so that you can see what the t-shirt looks like. It's kind of a basic t-shirt, but then the sleeve has a really nice pleated detail. Got a kind of wrap over um, pleated detail to it and then a little cuff. And I think that looks really pretty. And I've seen loads of lovely versions of that around on Instagram and online. And I keep thinking I must make that up. So I think I might have a go at that one with this fabric just because it's that little bit plainer and I think it will show off the detail a bit more. And then I think for the white and black kind of speckly jersey, I might have a go at the Tabitha t-shirt from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. So I've had this book for ages and I keep thinking I need to have a go at this t-shirt. Um, so it's just a really simple kind of short sleeve t-shirt, but you can actually make it as a dress as well. And because I have so much of this fabric, I'm really tempted to have a go at the dress. Um, but I feel as though I'm getting a bit distracted there and I need to stick to t-shirts because that's what I actually need. I really don't need any more dresses. Um, but the dress is actually really nice. This is what the uh, type of the dress looks like. It's a long sleeve picture here, but you can actually make it with short sleeves. And I do think that would look really nice in that white speckled fabric. I'm just not quite sure. So I'll either stick to my plan and make a t-shirt with it um, because that's what I really need, or I might go for the dress just because that's more fun. <laughs> and um, you can't ever have too many dresses in your wardrobe, I don't think anyway, can you? So uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Should I make the t-shirt with that speckly fabric or should I make the dress? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And then I'll blame you that I have too many dresses in my wardrobe and not enough t-shirts. <laughs> so that's those two jerseys. So I just feel at the moment, uh, I keep saying this, but then I keep getting distracted by all the lovely dress patterns and blouse patterns that there are out there to make. But I just need to start making more basics because um, although I do have quite a lot of sweatshirts and t-shirts in my wardrobe, on my, in my kind of day-to-day -day life, that's what I wear the most. So I do need quite a lot of them. And a lot of my sweatshirts and t-shirts are still shop-bought, which is fine because I'm never really gonna be one to have a fully handmade wardrobe, I don't think, because I enjoy buying ready-made pieces far too much. But um, yeah, I'd really like to start making a few more kind of basic things like t-shirts and sweatshirts. And they're just not things that I get on with making. So these should all be quite quick projects, the sweatshirts, and the t-shirts really, they take about an hour to make, don't they? And they're really quick to kind of knock up, but I just um, I just don't get on with them for some reason. So I really must get on with these things and then I'd have them in my wardrobe to wear. I need to not get distracted. So next, I was kindly given this fabric um, by a lovely independent company called Ruinteered. You may have heard of them. They're a fabric um, designer, so they print on cotton and jersey, and their prints are absolutely beautiful. And the lady that runs Ruinted kindly contacted me on Instagram and asked me if I'd like to 
try one of their fabrics. I could choose whatever I wanted out of their fabric range and she would send me some to try for her with no obligation to share but of course I will share because the fabric is lovely. So this is the print that I decided to go for and it's a cotton print. It's on a white background and it has a really beautiful kind of bunny foresty print on it. <laughs> bunny foresty print, that's a really good description isn't it? Um, but the colours in this are really pretty. So you can see there's some sort of coral and mustard and green. And I actually wanted to make something for my daughter from the fabrics on their website because they are quite sort of animal orientated, I suppose. And my daughter loves animals. So I got her to choose and this is what she picked. And this actually comes on a green background as well. And we were wondering for a while which background we should go for. And then we went for the white. And I think she made the right choice because it is really pretty. So that is going to be something for my daughter. She's nine now and I think she just wants a pretty dress really. So I'm going to look in my pattern stash and see what I have that will still fit her. <laughs> because I realised recently that a lot of my patterns she's actually growing out of now and I need to buy some more. And I've had these sort of dress patterns that I've used as she's grown up over the years. And now she's nine, she's not really fitting into those patterns anymore. So I'm going to have to see if they do fit. And if not, I'm going to have to probably buy um, another dress pattern. Ikati Couture, I think they might be just called Ikati now actually. They have some really lovely dress patterns and I have used a couple of those for her in the past so I might have a look on their website and see if they have anything sort of suitable for her. Recently she's kind of got a bit more out of wearing dresses and she's more into sort of shorts and leggings and um, trousers and things so I really hope that she will wear this when I make it up for her. She seems really excited about the fabric and the print actually so hopefully um, she'll really enjoy wearing that whenever I get around to making it up for her which hopefully will be soon because this is a really lovely summery print and um, I want her to have it so that she can wear it this summer. Isn't that really lovely? So I'll link Ruinted's details down below just in case you want to pop over and give them a follow on Instagram. They have a really lovely Instagram page and a really beautiful range of fabric. So yeah, do pop over and check them out. So next, not really a very interesting one actually, but I thought I'd just show you that the um, fabric for my Gabin shorts have arrived. So I recently shared a video where I wanted to try and recreate some kind of high street looks that I'd seen and I've chosen to make a pair of paper bag waist shorts and um, I want to make up the Gabin shorts by Apolline Patterns. So I'll just pop in an image of the shorts here in case you didn't see my previous video. And I ordered this yarn dyed viscose linen from Minerva and that's what I want to use to make the shorts up in. Um, so it's arrived and it's really lovely. It's really kind of um, drapey and it feels really soft. It's much nicer than I thought it would be actually. I thought it might be a bit stiff. Um, but yeah, it feels really nice. So, and I love the shade as well. I think it's kind of denim-y and it will go with lots of things. So I really want to get on with making those shorts. I think I might try, if I'm patient enough, I might try and make a twirl from a bed sheet. Um, I still have some sort of bed sheet fabric lying around. So I might actually try and make a twirl of those shorts before I actually cut into this fabric because I'm not really that used to making shorts. Actually, I'm not sure if I've made any shorts. <laughs> I've made the Sophia trousers and sort of things that aren't very fitted, but I've never really made a proper pair of fitted shorts. And um, I realized the other day that I put these Gabin shorts on my kind of wish list of things to make for summer. And I completely forgot that I had plans in my Make 9 to make the Jessa shorts by Tilly and the Buttons. Um, so I did wonder whether I should make the Jessa shorts out of this fabric instead. But I think considering how drapey and kind of floaty this fabric is, it's not really floaty but it has a bit of drape, um, I think I'm going to stick with the Gabin shorts this time because I think the Jessa shorts are probably a bit more suited to something a bit more stable like a denim or something but I need to remember that I need to make those for summer as well. <laughs> this is why I never normally do a make nine because I get way too distracted by everything else I want to make. Um, but yeah anyway I'm waffling on now but this is my fabric for the Gabin shorts and I'm really pleased with it. I just realised that I have two other fabrics actually that I've not shared with you so far. So these are two other fabrics I picked up from Minerva recently. Um, I picked up this really pretty cotton lawn fabric and with this I wanted to make some pyjama shorts. Um, I was given a pattern by Makerist when I worked with them on their recent $2 sale. I'll pop in an image here and I'll link it below just in case you're interested and you want to have a better look at that pattern. 
Um, but yeah, I really wanted to make up some pyjama shorts and I saw this fabric and thought how pretty it was. It almost looks like a Liberty print, I think, to me. So pretty, so it's kind of red and orange and yellow. And um, yes, I love it. Um, so I think this is gonna be some kind of nightwear. The other thing I really want to make actually is a cotton kind of dressing gown because I have a really thick fleecy one that's perfect for winter but I don't really have a summer weight one. I have a metre and a half of this so I'm not quite sure if that'll be enough just to make a kind of three quarter length um, robe or dressing gown. But I might have a look around and see if I can find a pattern for one of those because I think that would be really lovely as a dressing gown. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this, but it's going to be some kind of nightwear. <laughs> so if you do know of a really good dressing gown pattern, do let me know in the comments below because I haven't even looked yet. I know so over it I have the Sylvia robe, which can be made into a kind of dressing gowny type thing with a belt. So I might have a look at that pattern. But yeah, if you do have any really good dressing gown recommendations, let me know in the comments below. So next, another fabric from Minerva. I picked up another jersey and I have to say, this isn't quite what I thought it was. <laughs> so I really like the look of this. It's a viscose jersey and um, it's got this kind of stripe to it, but it's way more see-through than I thought it was gonna be. So I'm not quite sure what to do with this now. I guess it would make a nice t-shirt. I just wanted to make another t-shirt with it really. But, um, yeah, because it's so see-through. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to do with it now, but I think I'll just have to make it up as a normal t-shirt and then wear like a little slip top or something underneath it, um, which might make it a bit hot for summertime. But uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. But it's really pretty and really floaty and drapey. And it does have this really lovely kind of stripe where it's like a normal jersey and then it goes a bit see-through. So I do really like it. I've got a metre and a half. I'm just not quite sure what to do with it. Yeah, I think a really kind of drapey t-shirt would look really nice that you could wear a vest under and it wouldn't be too hot or too clingy to you kind of thing. So I'm going to look out for a pattern, maybe the Mandy boat tee or something like that. So yeah, another one, please let me know what you think I should do with this because um, as I say, it's really nice. I'm just not quite sure what to do with it and it was a little bit more see-through than I thought it was going to be when it arrived. <laughs> so those are all my fabrics. As I said, I seem to have acquired quite a lot over the last few weeks or so. I have been really trying to use up my stash but these things happen and fabrics just come up and I can't resist them. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get some of those things sewn up soon. I really need to get some of the basic quick and easy things sewn up soon. So hopefully it won't take me too long to get around to those. Oh, I forgot to say that recently I actually picked up this lovely pattern from Minerva. It's a Sew Over It 1940s tea dress. So recently Minerva had a big sale on Sew Over It patterns and I think it's because Sew Over It have recently changed their branding, haven't they? So they've got rid of this kind of vintage-y um, pattern cover design, which I'm really sad about because I love these pattern covers and I kind of collect them and I love the illustrations and everything, but I understand why they've done it. They've had to kind of keep up with the times and I know that things are changing for them and everything, but I will be sad to see these kind of vintage-y illustrated pattern covers go. Um, so I wanted to grab a few of their patterns while they were in the sale and before this design kind of ended. Um, so I ordered this 1940s tea dress and I actually ordered the 1940s wrap dress as well but unfortunately I wasn't quick enough for that one and it went out of stock before I could get it. Um, but yeah, I've wanted to try this pattern for a while. Um, so I'll just show you the line drawings at the back. It's a really pretty vintage style dress and I've wanted to make it up for quite a while now so I'm really pleased to have got this pattern. I don't have any fabric or anything for that at the moment. I'm gonna have a look out and see if I can see anything that's suitable for it. It doesn't take very much fabric at all actually. Not a lot of fabric at all required in that but what's putting me off of this one is that you need to put in an invisible zip and I absolutely hate doing zips. I know some people hate doing buttonholes but I really hate doing zips. <laughs> So, um, well, I say I hate them. I think it's just that I've not really done them very much. I don't really tend to make things with zips in very much, but this one does require a 22 inch invisible zip. So that's gonna be fun, <laughs> but it will be good practice. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having a go at that at some point. 
So in terms of what I'm sewing at the moment, I've finished my frilly collar blouse hack that I talked about in my recent um, looks I'd like to recreate video, which I will link below if you haven't seen and you'd like to watch. So in that video, I said I really wanted to make a frilly collar blouse hack and I've finished that now and I was so tempted to share it in this video. <laughs> but I'm not going to, um, I'm gonna save it for my makes video, which will hopefully be next week. If you're on Instagram, you probably would have already seen um, a sneak peek of that blouse because I did share it over there, but I'm gonna save it for my makes video here on YouTube. So my next project is actually to make the Sapphire trousers that I mentioned that I was gonna make. And I have them all cut out here. I'll just show you kind of folded up like that because all the pattern pieces are all inside. But I've cut out my Sapphire trousers by tilling the buttons and my Ogden cami. So I'm ready to kind of put together my faux jumpsuit thing that I'm gonna try and make. Um, and I thought with the Ogden cami, I might try and add a frill to the straps at the top. So I've actually cut out as well the frill or the cap sleeve from the sew over it shift dress pattern, which I'm thinking about attaching to the top of my Ogden cami um, straps. So I'm gonna see how that works out while I'm sewing. It may or may not happen, but I thought that might be quite nice and something a little bit different. That's next in terms of sewing. And that's what I was hoping to film as a sew along this week, but I just haven't got around to it, unfortunately. So next, I just thought I'd show you where I am with my knitting. So I'm knitting up this Sir Dark cardigan pattern, and I'll just put in an image of it now because I don't have the paper pattern to hand. So you may remember if you've seen my previous videos that I was a bit worried that this cardigan might look a little bit kind of old fashioned. <laughs> um, but I have to say, I'm really loving how it's turning out. So I've finished the back now, and this is what the back looks like. So I'm using a Rowan cotton cash cashmere yarn and it's really lovely to knit with. You can see that it's a really nice kind of denim blue and I really like the colour of this. Um, so yeah, the back took a little while to do because I was knitting on four millimetre needles which I haven't done for quite a while. I yeah, kind of finished my Rowan really chunky jumper which knitted up really quickly and went on to this kind of double knitting project which seemed to be taking far longer than that one. But I'm really enjoying it. I think I much prefer knitting on smaller needles actually than I do on chunky needles. So the back's done. Um, the pattern actually gets you to, or would get you to, um, put in a bit of shaping to the back so it kind of goes in an hourglass like this so you would kind of decrease and then you'd increase again to give that more fitted shape to the cardigan but I decided not to do any of that shaping so I've just done my back straight um, up to the armholes and I think I'll probably prefer that look. <laughs> I'm nearly finished the left front now I think it is. Is that the left front? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and the left front, the two fronts have a lace pattern to them. And this is how the lace pattern's knitting up. And I really like it. Um, I'm really enjoying knitting this actually. It's just on an eight row repeat. And um, it's one of those where I thought it was really difficult at first, but once I got it in my head, I can quite happily kind of knit it in the evenings without having to think about it too much. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I really like how it looks as well. It's got this kind of triangle lace design all over it and um, I think it will be really pretty actually when it's done. So I'm just at that awkward part now where you have to start casting off and decreasing for the um, kind of armhole and then the neck edge and I really hate doing that when you're working on a pattern at the same time because you have to kind of work out where you are in the pattern with less stitches, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and I always find that really confusing. So um, yeah, it takes a little bit more thinking and working out in the evenings to do that at the moment. But I really want this to be finished quite quickly so that I can wear it in the summer. Um, I'm not sure if it will be actually, because I don't get that much time to knit, only a couple of hours in the evening. But uh, yeah, hopefully if I get a move on, it might be done not too late into the summer. But yeah, really enjoying that at the moment. And just in case you're interested, this is the yarn I'm using for the pattern. It's a Rowan Cotton Cashmere. I can't remember what colour this is actually. Don't think it says. No, it doesn't say the colour, but I'll try and list it in the description below if you are interested in the colour. So finally, just a little reading catch up. Um, so in my last kind of catch up video, I was reading The House of Riverton by Kate Morton and I finished that and I absolutely loved it. And uh, when I mentioned that I was reading that, lots of people recommended other Kate Morton books. And I think I have read most of them, but I hadn't read The Clockmaker's Daughter. So that's what I'm reading now. So here it is, it's quite a chunky, thick book. 
Um, yeah, so The Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton again, and I'm absolutely loving it. I'm reading this really quickly because I'm enjoying it so much, which is quite unusual for me. Normally I'm a sort of read um, five pages in bed and then fall asleep kind of person. <laughs> but I'm really getting through it quite quickly, which is nice. So it's a really kind of similar style for her. It's kind of one of those books where it's narrated by someone um, in this day and age <laughs> and then it goes back into the past and it kind of unravels a mystery from the past so I really like those kind of style books and it's a bit kind of ghosty as well and I quite like a good ghost story it's kind of narrated by someone um, who isn't alive anymore I won't say too much just in case you are going to read this book but yeah I really like the style in which this one's written so I definitely recommend this book if like me you really like that kind of old-fashioned style vintagey houses and vintagey kind of writing um, is my absolute favourite and going back into the past so yeah really enjoying this book I'd highly recommend it if you do want to read something similar. So after I finish this book I don't actually have any more books to read so if you do have a good book recommendation then let me know in the comments below. I do like to read things that are kind of set in the past but I also like quite thrillery type things as well so if you have any good book recommendations and do let me know in the comments below because I'd love to know and uh, now that the libraries are open again we can actually go and borrow books which is brilliant so yeah I can always pop along to the library and see if I can get myself a new book. So I think that's everything I wanted to share today I feel like it's been a bit of a mammoth video of waffle <laughs> so I hope it's been okay um, as I say I was going to film something completely different but it just didn't happen so um, I hope this video hasn't been too kind of cobbled together and waffly and I hope you've enjoyed it. So as always let me know what you're up to in the comments below, let me know what you're making, let me know any book recommendations like I said because I always love chatting to you in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and please do give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Have a lovely day whatever you're doing and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!